Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So next topic in the nephritic syndromes is rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. So rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis is derived by the severe injury to the glomerulus resulting in a rapid and progressive loss of renal functions which culminates into severe oliguria. So when we talk about rapid and progressive we talk about rapid loss of renal functions over days to weeks. So RPGN is classified on the basis of immunological findings into three subgroups. The first is anti-GBM antibody mediated. Then there is immune complex deposition mediated disease. And then there is Cauchy immune rapid progressive glomerulonephritis. Let's discuss each of these subtypes. So the first of all is the anti-glomerular basement antibody mediated disease. So in this case, glomerular basement membrane contains type 4 collagen. So the alpha-3 chain of the type 4 collagen acts as an antigen here. So IgG antibodies are formed against these antigens forming immune complexes which deposit in the linear fashion in glomerular basement membrane. As you may recall in post streptococcal glomerulonephritis, the immune complex deposition was in granular form. Whereas in anti-GBM mediated RPGN, the immune complex deposition is in linear fashion. So these immune complexes recruit the inflammatory cells such as neutrophils, macrophages and monocytes which result in the glomerular basement membrane injury. So type 4 collagen is also present in the alveolar basement membrane in lungs. So these patients often present with recurrent hemoptysis accompanied by the symptoms of RPGN. So this is known as good posture syndrome in which there are similar lesions in the alveoli as in the glomerular basement membrane. This here is the glomerular basement membrane as you can see in the diagram. This glomerular basement membrane contains type 4 collagen which is disrupted and results in an increased flow of proteins and cells across the glomerular basement membrane into the urinary space. The next is immune complex deposition mediated disease in which there are immune complexes from a systemic disease such as IgA nephropathy, HSP and the post infectious glomerulonephritis. So immune complexes in these diseases deposit in the granular form just like in post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. So these immune complexes recruit the leukocytes at the site and result in the inflammation which damages the glomerular basement membrane. The thing you have to remember is that in anti GBM antibody mediated RPGN, the immune complexes deposition is in linear form, whereas in immune complexes deposition mediated RPGN, the immune complexes are deposited in granular form. So, coming on towards the third subtype, Cauchy means scars. So, there are no IgG or C3 or IgM antibodies in these cases. Rather, there are anti nuclear antibodies, also known as ANCA which are associated with the vasculitis. So these ANCA can be either cytoplasmic anti-nuclear antibodies or these can be perinuclear antibodies. So the 90% of the cases that involve the glomeruli are limited to the kidneys and do not involve the systemic blood vessels. And these are known as idiopathic cases. So these idiopathic cases are positive with either C ANCA or P ANCA. So these antibodies damage the glomerular blood vessels resulting in the disruption of glomerular basement membrane allowing the transport of proteins and cells across the glomerular basement membrane. So coming on towards the morphology. So the gross appearance reveals enlarged kidneys and they appear pale in color. Petechial hemorrhages are also positive in the cortical surface of the kidney. The cross section reveals various focal necrotic segments and endothelial end mesangial proliferation is also seen. The typical feature on the histology are the crescents. So this complete is the glomeruli and this here is a crescent. So these crescents are the hypercellular areas which are due to proliferation of parietal epithelium of the Bowman's capsule and there is increased influx of inflammatory cells such as neutrophils, macrophages and monocytes. So these crescents obliterate the urinary spaces this is the Bowman's capsule and this here is the urinary space. So this urinary space is completely obliterated by the formation of crescents. So this crescent compresses the tufts of glomeruli as you can see here. There are also fibrin strands between, between the crescent cellular layers as you can see this here is again a crescent and you can see these are the cells and there are fibrin strands within these cells. There are also focal necrotic areas in the histological picture. 
So one thing you need to remember here is that the focal necrotic areas which are in proximity to the glomeruli but contain no inflammatory cells. I will be emphasizing on this point that the focal necrotic areas adjacent to the glomeruli but having no inflammatory cells are a typical feature of Cauchy immune RPGM. So coming on towards the microscopic picture, the electron microscopy reveals disrupted glomerular basement membrane. As you can see here, the glomerular basement membrane is disrupted, allowing various cells and proteins to enter the urine. Immunofluorescence microscopy reveals deposits of immune complexes on glomerular basement membrane. So these immune complexes can either be linear or granular. Just to recall, the linear deposition is in anti-GBM, antibody mediated RPGN, whereas the granular deposition is in immune complex deposition mediated RPGN. Whereas no immune complexes are found in Cauchy immune RPGN. So which antibodies are found in the Cauchy immune RPGN? The antibodies present in the Cauchy immune RPGN are MK. One thing more that we have to understand is the formation of crescents, that how these crescents are actually formed. So once there is damage to the glomerular basement membranes, the cells infiltrate into the Bowman's capsule, which includes RBCs, WBCs and platelets along with various proteins. The inflammation results in the production of tissue growth factors and platelet derived growth factors along with the fibrin. So all these factors increase the proliferation of parietal epithelial cells. So this here is a Bowman's capsule and these are the efferent and afferent arterioles. This here is the GBM or glomerular basement membrane. This Bowman capsule is lined by the parietal epithelium and food processes of the podocytes at the GBM side of Bowman's capsule. So this is parietal epithelium, this is urinary space and these are the food processes of the podocytes. So what happens here is that parietal epithelium proliferate and form multiple layers of the cells and once the glomerular basement membrane is disrupted, there is a large influx of various proteins and cells inside the urinary spaces forming a crescent and obliterating the urinary space. So coming on towards the sign and symptoms, so RPGN is a very rapidly progressive disease which progresses into severe oliguria within days to weeks. So the patient typically presents with the hematuria and proteinuria. Proteinuria is less than 3.5 grams per day but it might also reach up to the nephrotic range which is more than 3.5 grams per day at certain occasions. There is always periorbital edema which is of the pitting nature and there is hypertension. Severe oliguria occurs at the late end of the disease resulting in renal failure. Recurrent hemoptysis also occurs if there is lungs involvement which is known as good posture syndrome. So the diagnosis is based on the urine analysis which reveals cause of blood cells in the urine certain leukocytes and proteinuria less than 3.5 grams per day. Serum antibodies can also be detected such as, such as, anti -GB, such as anti GBM antibodies and ANCA. Treatment is aggressive and employs steroids along with the certain cytotoxic agents along with the plasma phoresis. But in the late stages of the disease, the patient needs dialysis and renal transplant. So to understand the concept better, a 36 year old female with the recurrent hemoptysis, which can be due to any reason such as in tuberculosis and other diseases involving the alveolar hemorrhages. So the patient presented with the oliguria which is decreased urinary output and hematuria which means presence of blood inside the urine. So these signs and, signs and symptoms can present separately separate diseases such as in tuberculosis and renal stones. But given the subject matter, we will consider these signs and symptoms interconnected to each other. So the provisional diagnosis is good pasture syndrome which involves both the kidneys and the lungs. So what is the antigen in this case? The antigen is alpha 3 chain of the collagen type 4 which is found in the glomerular basement membrane as well as in the alveolar basement membrane. The typical feature of RPGN on histopathology is the formation of crescents. So just to recall, the crescents are formed by the increased proliferation of parietal epithelium and increased leukocytes in the urinary space. So this concludes our discussion about rapid progressive glomerulonephritis.
If you have any questions, do let us know in the comment section. Thank you.